So here we are to talk about a Bernoulli sequence. Now, other math teachers might call it a Bernoulli sequence, but Bernoulli was French, so that's my bad French accent. Bernoulli sequence. Ta-da! A sequence of repeated trials with only two possible outcomes. So what do I mean by that? Well, this can be like my coin. I grab it, and if it's like bottom up bottom up, top up, bottom up, top up. Only two possible outcomes, bottom up or top up. That was a sequence of repeated trials with only two possible outcomes. Now, that's misleading because there's a 50-50 chance that it's either top up or bottom up. Uh, but that does not have to be the case with a Bernoulli sequence. So let's look at a slightly more, a different example. So I'm going to roll this dice. Um, now you might say, wait a minute, a dice has six outcomes, but we're going to think about our outcomes in terms of success and failure. And we're going to talk about success and failure a lot when it comes to Bernoulli sequences. Um, now a success uh, is rolling a six, and a failure is not a six. And you can see, so even though a dice has many different outcomes, I can set it up so that it's a Bernoulli sequence as long as I decide one thing's going to be success and one thing is going to be failure. So now let's do a little step by step to check that rolling a dice multiple times where six is success and not a six is failure is in fact a Bernoulli sequence. So number one, each trial results in success or failure. Yes, every time I roll that dice, I will either have a success, a six, or a failure, not a six. Next, the probability of success on each trial is constant. Yes, it doesn't matter if it's my first roll or my tenth roll, the probability of success is one sixth. It doesn't affect it, and so that brings us sort of to our third point as well. Trials are independent, and you've done independent probability before, uh, independent means that one trial does not affect the next trial. And rolling a dice here, just if I roll a six, say, it's just as likely that the next one will be a six. It's still a one in six chance. The last roll doesn't affect the next roll. So at this point, it feels really important that I give you an example of what's not a Bernoulli sequence. So I have a pack of cards here. Boop. Uh, and let's say I win if uh, I pick an ace, okay? Um, so, each trial results in success or failure. Yes, true. Either that's an ace or it's not. Oh, it's an ace, okay. So, success. Now I'm gonna take that card and I'm gonna put it down here. And now I'm gonna pick another card. And this card will also be a success or a failure. But, the probability of success on each trial is constant. Now, when I picked out this ace, the probability of success was 4 in 52. But, after picking out that card and putting it over here, and it was an ace, the probability of success on this trial would be 3 in 51. The probability of success is changing, it's not constant. So, the trials are not independent. The trials are dependent upon each other. If I pick an ace, it's less likely I'll pick an ace the next time. If I don't pick an ace, it's more likely I'll pick an ace. So, picking these cards out and putting them over here is not a Bernoulli sequence. But, shuffling it, picking a card and hoping it's an ace, no. Putting it back, shuffling it, picking a card and hoping it's an ace, no. That is a Bernoulli sequence because either success or failure, the probability of success is always the same, 4 in 52, um, and the trials are independent, they're not affecting each other. So that is a Bernoulli sequence, and next we're going to be able to use that to determine something called a binomial distribution.